Well, it's time for our health report and joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Mudu with a look at uh, communicable diseases. Hello, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Hello, everyone. The World Health Organization says 38 million people die each year from chronic diseases which are preventable and treatable. A new report from the WHO warns that nearly half of those who die from non-communicable diseases, about 16 million people, do so prematurely before the age of 70. The majority of people who die from these illnesses reside in developing countries. The WHO says death from non-communicable illnesses such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and chronic lung disease have increased worldwide since 2000 and grown the most in Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific. But by 2020, well, the largest increases in this death will occur in Africa. So far, progress in reversing the trends has been insufficient and uneven. As obesity rates in Kenya rise, an NGO in the East African country is stepping up its effort to raise awareness about the risks of weight associated, associated diseases such as diabetes. The campaign targets school children and families living in low-income areas. 17 years old, Hawa Khalid lives with her parents in Bulbul, a low-income area just over 20 kilometers away from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Hawa has been living with type 1 diabetes for two years now. She has to take a blood test every day to check her blood sugar levels. Known as early onset diabetes, type 1 diabetes often affects children and young adults. At first I thought it was typhoid. I went to the hospital, I explained to the doctor. I, I explained the symptoms, the Thursdays. I told him I was drinking too much water every time and frequently urine I was short call every time. He tested me, my blood sugar. He found out that the blood sugar was very high. Diabetes patients have inadequate blood sugar control which can lead to serious complications including nerve, kidney damage and blindness. At the St. Lillian School in Kikuyu, on the outskirts of Nairobi, these children are about to have a rather unusual lesson. And we're going to talk to Dad this evening and say, Dad? Vincent Mbungwa is a health educator with the Kenya Diabetes Management and Information Center. When we talk to the children, we expect them now to share that in the evening during dinner. And some of them have done that, and we have seen results. I'm telling you, we have diagnosed parents because of children passing the message back home. The Kenya Diabetes and Management Information Center opened its doors in 1990. Since then, the center has been involved in awareness campaigns to sensitize Kenyans about the disease. The center provides free insulin for low-income families and children under 18. Nearly 2 million Kenyans are living with diabetes, and about 10% of that number are children. Joseph Ndugu is a health coordinator at DMI. People have now the tendency of eating foods that are very high in calories and that put a challenge in our body and eventually makes the pancreas to overwork and for a long time may lead to failure of pancreas. So actually junk feeding is a major contributor. Number two is obesity. As we grow fat, we develop resistance to insulin and that makes pancreas to work harder to overcome the resistance and by and by can lead to failure to, of pancreas to produce insulin. Fast food is being blamed as one reason why diabetes is increasing. Opinions are split. I take junk food, mostly because it's available, easily available and it's cheaper. I personally don't, I really take junk food because I don't, I don't want to get obese. And I also know the other health conditions that are associated with it. About 180 million people worldwide are suffering from diabetes. Kenyan health workers hope they can reach the next generation before it is too late. Okay. Okay, yes, Kai from Geneva, Switzerland, is Dr. Shanti Mendes, coordinator for chronic disease prevention and management at the World Health Organization. Dr. Mendes, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So death from uh, non-communicable diseases have increased uh, since 2000. How did we get here? There are quite a few causes for this. Uh, one major reason why the deaths and the prevalence of non-communicable diseases 
have increased is uh, due to the behavioral risk factor prevalence increasing. That is, people are now becoming less physically active, uh, consumption of unhealthy diet, use of tobacco, use of uh, overuse, harmful use of alcohol. All these risk factors have increased in prevalence. This is one reason. Another reason is aging of populations. And with better life expectancies, people are living uh, to uh, living a longer life. And so we have aging populations in countries. So it's a combination of both that have led to this situation. But when we look at the big picture in terms of uh, prevention and treatment, what about the, the role that even the financial impact uh, on this problem and the, the fact that we need a strong health systems to also prevent and treat these diseases. To what extent is this uh, relevant? It's very uh, clear that prevention as well as healthcare both are very, very important. And the third important factor is surveillance, that is information and data about diseases and risk factors. So if you talk about prevention, we are talking about the main risk factors that are the causes of these diseases. But healthcare, particularly strong primary healthcare systems, are extremely important so that people with these conditions can be detected early before they develop complications and taken care of in an appropriate way. Of course, when you talk about healthcare systems, uh, you have to also take care of the financing issue of health, as well as uh, the health workers, their capacity, their competence, availability of medicines and technologies, uh, referral systems, okay. as well as health information systems. And quickly in five seconds, how can we reverse this trend? I know it's a big question, but if you were to point out some one thing specifically. A lot of attention has to be paid to prevention. People have to pay more attention to being physically active, maintaining ideal body weights, uh, not becoming overweight. In other words, uh, trying to eat healthy diets, which are not high in calories, not high in sugar and fat, and also taking physical activity on a daily basis. Uh, okay. That is extremely important. Okay, Dr. Mendes, thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have. And that Thank was uh, Dr. Shanti Mendes. She is a coordinator for chronic disease prevention and management at the World Health Organization. And that's all for your health report today. Back to you, Vincent. Well, you know, thanks. Uh, be sure to watch Lino Madhu's health reports every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Africa 54.